another hack alert. This time, Brazil is the victim. The hacking group Lultsec claims on Twitter to have disabled two Brazilian government websites. Britain's Telegraph says attempts to bring up the sites earlier today were unsuccessful, suggesting Lultsec did, in fact, carry out a denial of service attack. And for months, the hackers have had the upper hand. Computer vigilantes have broken into computer networks uh, with abandoned, wild abandoned, Lockheed, Martin, Sega, Citigroup, and, as I just told you, Brazil. Now the dragnet is closing in. Spain arrested three members of the hacking group that calls itself anonymous. And yesterday, British police arrested a 19-year-old man suspected in attacks on Sony and the CIA. Here to tell us whether companies can finally breathe easier is Chris Weisopel. Chris is chief technology officer at Vericode, a company that tests software for security flaws. Chris, you've been named one of the 100 most influential people in information technology. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Can companies breathe easier now that the authorities are moving in and actually finding some of the perpetrators? I don't think they can completely breathe easier because the vulnerabilities are still there. The fact that these groups were able to spring up and just organize and get into government sites, defense contractor sites, shows that the security just isn't there. And there will be others to follow in these people's footsteps. You deal with chief information officers, chief technology officers at some of these companies. Why is it that their networks are so vulnerable? Surely they must have seen part of this threat coming. I think that uh, there was some, you know, breathing easy in, you know, five years ago. People had their firewalls and their antivirus, and what's happened is the attackers' techniques have changed. There's things called spear phishing. There's attacking websites directly with application vulnerabilities, and these companies haven't kept up with the latest attacks, and they're learning about it now. I want you to differentiate, if there's a differentiation to be made, between the vigilantes, the anonymouses, the lultzacks, who don't appear to have a commercial motive necessarily, and the real threat, you might say, right? The people in China, the people in Russia, maybe the people in Estonia, who are effectively mercenaries if they're not actually working for those governments. Sure. So the same set of vulnerabilities that are being attacked by these vigilantes are being used by espionage groups, sealing government and co um, commercial data. Uh, and so that's the real serious threat. These guys are just having a lot of fun and poking fun and shaming companies. But I would worry about, you know, those same vulnerabilities being used by foreign governments. So the message may be, and I don't want to draw too many inferences here, is that even if the Spanish or the American or the Brazilian authorities or whomever, the British, happen to find some of these hackers, if you don't get your computer network secure, you're still vulnerable to the people who are beyond the reach of the law in the developed world. A absolutely. A lot of us in the security community actually think that what's going on with these vigilantes is pointing out issues that should have been fixed a long time ago and waking these companies up to this silent menace, really, which is this foreign espionage. So possibly doing them a backhanded favor? To, to some degree, to some degree. Even though many details of uh, private details, customer information has been compromised in the process. That's right. I mean, it's, it's a pretty painful message to have your, to learn, to, to learn you need to secure your network by it being broken into. Chris, I know it's very, it's, it's almost impossible to put a single dollar figure on it, but how big an expense do some of these companies face? Well, the Sony attack is just one big attack was pegged at $177 million. So that shows the scale of things. Uh, most of these attacks we're talking about, you know, potentially tens of millions of dollars per organization. Chris, thanks for joining us. Look forward to having you back. Chris Weisopel, named one of the 100 most influential people in infotech information technology. He's the chief technology officer at Veracode.